Thank you. So, yeah, I'm Mark. I appreciate those uh, kind words of introduction there, Shree. Thank you. Um, I entitled this Bringing Wall Street Secrets to H2O Users. I'm going to guess that the vast majority of you have never heard of KX and have never heard of the KDB Plus product that we have, um, unless you work in finance. Until really about two years ago, we were exclusively uh, a, a Wall Street kind of company, a Wall Street software company. Uh, that changed two, two or three years ago, and we started breaking into other verticals as we noticed that so much data from IoT, from pharma, um, from all, this, all, all the other uh, space that, that we've been looking at is time series data. Uh, as Shree said earlier, time is the one unifying component that links data together, and we're a time series company. Um, I'd never heard of KX when I was looking for a database back in 2001. I was working over at Deutsche Bank at the time, um, and we, we, all the exchanges had just started moving from being like the open outcry, guys wearing, uh, it was always guys, wearing multicolored jackets, shouting at each other with hand signals in the pits. Those days had gone, they'd just gone, and uh, exchanges had gone electronic which meant they were started to produce massive amounts of time series based data. Uh, massive by those standards and also really massive by today's standards as well. Um, terabytes and, and petabytes became common very, very quickly. And back in 2001, there were not very many solutions that could actually cope with that volume of data um, and give you the capability to analyze it in real time as it came in. So I was at Deutsche Bank. I was head of e-commerce, I think was the somewhat grandiose title. E-commerce was actually a thing back in 2001. And asking around, it appeared that the majority of other banks had selected this product, KDB Plus, uh, to manage that market data stream. So we went out, we bought it, we plugged it in, we collected all the data from the exchanges. It was one of those pieces of technology that we could just stick in the server room and, and forget about, because it just worked. So that was, that, that was, that was great. Uh, and I pretty much forgot about it after that for a few months until uh, these three characters entered my life. Um, the first one's Brian Conlon, the CEO of First Derivatives, the owner of KX Systems nowadays, and my boss. The lady uh, on the right is Jeanette Lusgarden, who started, founded KX Systems over in Palo Alto, just down the road, uh, 25 years ago, with Arthur Whitney, the guy at the bottom. Arthur was, I didn't know it at the time, a world-renowned uh, data scientist. He'd worked with Ken Overson at IBM on APL. He'd written the A language that Morgan Stanley used worldwide, became A+. He'd written the K language that UBS Bank had used exclusively for a few years. And subsequently, he'd formed KX and written KDB+, to solve the simple problem of how do you manage massive amounts of data in real time reliably specifically time series data in this case. Brian Cantrell, actually, a guy who I really, really respect, uh, called Arthur, I was watching a YouTube of him the other day, he called Arthur the smartest man on the planet today, which is pretty much accurate from my experience, certainly. And he came to visit me, and he said, so this KDB, have you been using it? And I'm like, yes, yeah, great, sits there, does its job. And he said, what do you think of the programming language? And that kind of floored me, because when the smartest man on the planet asks you a question, you didn't even know it was a programming language. You feel pretty stupid. Um, and it was Brian that rescued me. He had an army of KDB engineers and, and data scientists. He lent me one. He turned up to my desk every morning, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. before the markets opened, and taught me Q, the language that sits inside KDB+. Um, I loved it. I absolutely fell in love with it. I'd always been hopeless at programming. I, I hated programming. It was like you, I was always dealing with this cruft and frameworks and objects and all this other stuff that got in my way. Um, Q let the thoughts go straight from my head to the silicon directly. It didn't get in my way. It facilitated my process of thinking. And I loved it. It was fantastic. I, was able to write some trading models. I showed them to my boss. He said, great, you're a trader now, and sat me on the trading desk, which is where I sat for the next 15, 16 years at various banks, uh, Deutsche, City, Bank of America, and a couple of buy-side firms. And I could not have made that transition to be a quant trader, which is what we were called at the time, 
uh, without KDB Plus, as it happens. It followed me throughout my career, and on a couple of occasions, I dragged it with me. So this is the language that we're talking about. It's a functional language. It's array-based. It's incredibly fast. I can't, uh, well, I can talk about how fast it is. It is the fastest thing I've ever seen. <clears throat> As a language, it's incredibly concise. Brevity is a really important part of it. Uh, the idea is to have a very small function do very, very powerful things, particularly with data. Um, it is based as a language entirely around time and the representation of time within data types. Uh, tables are a fast first-class data type. Table 1 plus table 2 is a legitimate command inside Q, and that'll give you a, t a table of two tables added together. I found it very easy to use. I started with this QSQL on top of it. Uh, it allowed for very expressive, concise SQL statements to get information back from large amounts of data at rest. By large, I mean petabytes. Uh, we don't know how large the largest installation is, but I've seen many tens of petabyte installations. And it has all of the expected time series based uh, features that you'd ex expect built into the SQL extensions. So you can do temporal joins, you can do bitemporal joins, which is really important when you're in IoT. There's no point being able to do a join to, to something to say, show me all of the sensor readings as of this time, as of this particular nanosecond, if one of those sensor readings was only valid for 50 milliseconds and the sensor failed two weeks ago. When you do that join, you've got to know the lifetime of all of the data inside the tables. It's really important. This has it all built in. Another thing I didn't realize how important it was at the time, it's actually a complete Lambda architecture out of the box. I can write a function, and I can run that on streaming incoming data. I can run it on data in the in-memory database, or I can run it against data at rest uh, on, on the actual historical database. And that saves me a lot of money, to be honest. I haven't got to write the same function, three different languages, three different technology stacks. I can just use the same one. So that's, that's critical. It's terrifyingly efficient. The entire executable is only 800 kilobytes large. It's a really well-engineered piece of software. And it's elegant. It's just, it's lovely writing, I found at least, that it's lovely writing code in this particular product. Um, Someone said, I can't remember who it was, that writing code should be like writing poetry or music. You know, it's, it's, it's a, an expressive thing. You're given a, a form and a structure to work within, but you can write beautiful code. And KDB certainly, um, well, not my code. If you see my code, you, it'll, you'll cry, but for the wrong reasons. Um, but good KDB developers really can write beautiful, beautiful code. So I said it's fast. It's really fast. Stack, I don't believe in benchmarking, generally. Um, benchmarks are too easy to fix. It's too easy to optimize your software to win. But the finance community got together. They wanted to measure technology to see really what was the best. And they created this independent foundation called Stack. Um, you can find it on the web. And they independently have real world problems in finance. Clearly, time series is a very big part of that. Um, and we currently hold most of the world records, certainly for in, all of them for in-memory compute, most of them for massive data at rest. And um, we're the only cloud vendor, uh, only database that's ever been selected by an external cloud vendor, Google in this case, to do independent benchmarking on. And it came out really well. We scale horizontally as well as vertically. So the Google implementation actually ran pretty much as well as a specialized bare metal installation. It was a very impressive piece of work. And there's some stats. We, we have some very, very large implementations, tens of thousands of nodes on AWS. We have live 60 million events coming in per second on one core um, at an IoT site that we have. We have a POC at another one that's running at 150 million events per second per core. Um, and that efficiency allows us to reduce total cost of ownership electricity, things like that. We don't know how big the largest KDB installation is. But for the last 25 years, this is what Wall Street has been using to manage time series data. 
19 out of the top 20 banks, something like that. And most buy side firms rely on KDB for their, um, for their, the, for their data management. That's what the stack looks like today. First derivatives and KX eventually got together and FD is now the, the holding company. The KDB that I was introduced to was that little bit at the bottom. Um, it's the database, it's the language, it's the time series Lambda architecture to let you do stream, streaming and at rest analytics. Above that, we've built a complete platform, an enterprise platform to save people by building their own, which is what we used to do. And on top of that, we have a series of applications that, that we do for the different verticals that we address. Um, Formula One is one of them. IoT is a very big one now. Telco's up and coming. And of course, our, our route is, is finance. Machine learning sits in the middle. I started getting into machine learning in about 2012, I think, when I, I studied deep learning for a couple of years. It was obviously going to take over finance. It was clear, even back then, that it was, it was the future. So I was really excited to be part of it then. <clears throat> Our clients love integrating machine learning applications into KDB. They use it a lot for their quants, or what finance calls data scientists, um, use a wide range of third-party products. We made sure that we could integrate into them. We simply put Python inside KDB, and that opened up a lot of the machine learning world to them. But I'll go into how we're changing that in, in just a moment. And of course, we also have inside that platform a series of data analytics tools, visualizations, dashboards, all the usual things that you would expect these days uh, a database and, and language to come with. So that's us today. And then a couple of months back, a few months back now, I met Shri at a mutual customer of ours. And we'd been having this, this conversation afterwards. In fact, we, we found a WeWork and just hijacked a meeting room for a couple of hours. And we discovered two things. We discovered, first of all, our companies were really, really similar. H2O has a culture that's very, really echoes to me. It's the same culture that we have at KX. Um, there's a very, very strong sense of community. I noticed that first at the H2O World in London, which I attended um, just to find out what was going on. And that sense of sort of sharing knowledge and, and the community aspect of it really appealed to me. It was, it's very much a, something that I see reflected in our own community uh, back, back at home. Home, by the way, for KX is actually 12 countries around the world now, and there's about 2,500 of us in total in, in, in first derivatives. Um, also, H2O, Shri was very keen that time series became the future building block of, of the predictive models that, in particular, driverless AI was going, to be, was going to be looking at. So we sat down, we got together, we realized that if we could put KX and KDB Plus into the back end of driverless AI, would be able to massively extend the range and processing that it was capable of doing. We could extend the amount of data it can look at. Petabytes would become normal. We would be able to integrate um, the production models that come out of driverless AI into production environments, like um, uh, be it Spark-based, be it Hadoop-based, be it KDB-based, um, all using the, the ability for, for driverless AI to access data via KDB and also to utilize the Q language within it. So this morning we were able to announce a partnership that says we're doing exactly that. Our machine learning engineers over in London are going to get on planes and fly over, start working with the H2 engineers, H2O engineers uh, in a week or two. And we're going to insert KDB Plus into driverless AI exposing all its features and functionality out to you, the users. Uh, unlimited amounts of KDB actually with every instance of, of driverless AI. So that we can move all data into, if it's appropriate, into a time series based environment. Uh, and that's the functionality that, that the partnership will be, will be given to us. Simultaneously, we'll be putting H2O into our own platform stack to make it a little bit more seamless for our users most of whom use H2O already, um, uh, to be able to run production models from their existing KDB deployments. So as a partnership, this really is a two-way partnership that I think is going to work. It's going to be very exciting, and the next six months should prove that. If in the meantime any of you want to play with KDB, and please do, it's really fun, um, 
we're on Google Cloud Marketplace or Amazon. You can, you can use that. However, that's for the commercial license, um, so it costs. If you want to use it for free, for non-commercial use, go to ondemand.kx.com and sign up. Um, the non-commercial license is absolutely free. It's, it's assumed that data scientists just like playing with this stuff at home. Um, it's also available, that on-demand version is available via a Condor or a um, Docker installation. And code.kx.com is where our developers generally go to to learn about it. Q for Mortals is a book that a, one of the senior quants at Morgan Stanley wrote about the language. Uh, he also put a series of introductory videos up on YouTube. Feel free to play along. All of our in interfaces to external platforms like Python, JupyterQ, Kafka, Java, uh, Spark, Spark in, shortly, are available open source and Apache 2, so you can play with those as you see fit. And I'd recommend that you visit the machine learning section of code.kx.com as well, because there's a series of, series of white papers of how our clients have applied machine learning in their environments today. And it'll be interesting to rewrite some of those in six months' time to, to have an H2O story up there instead. And finally, um, if you need any more info, obviously if there are any questions, I think I've got a minute left, um, just email me. It's mark at kx.com, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. And that's it. That's H2O and KX. Let's go back to the two slides before. I want to... Two before. I, I have to say... Um, Yes. That one? We're so excited at this partnership. I think it's going to bring a lot of innovation, uh, unlock tremendous amount of innovation to the KX community, but yep. also to the H2O. Uh, the work we are working on today works at time series that is not at, that, at the level at which um, microsecond tick data or kind of really low level, low latency, high speed um, data ingestion speeds that KX supports. Is yep. off the charts. Now we're looking forward to it. But I'm, uh, I'm uh, mindful of the comments you made about the cultures. Um, KX is extremely well regarded in the Wall Street, and it's one of the best kept secrets that are now going to. And I, I learned about APL and KX and Q actually in the days when I was building the company in Stanford. Arthur, obviously, uh, all the professors as I was building the product said, we should go talk to. Arthur, <laughs> uh, and we pulled in Niall at the time, and he, yeah. he helped. And we, I mean, this is very, sh very fun to see the whole full circle come back, and mm. through the means of customers. Uh, almost every customer we spent, we met. They were, can we, can I get a KDB connector? Yep. And we said we'll get, we'll do more. We'll just bring them so close together that um, you will probably have a difficult time seeing uh, whether it's KDB, KDAI, or DAI. So. Um, we're quite excited at the partnership, so we look forward to uh, coming back with our product line, hopefully tail end of the year, not Q3. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you.